Hello everybody, Mikey Cow here, and this is my new series on utilizing Blender as a video editor. And I'm specifically covering Blender 2.8 in this series. What we're looking at right now is what you see when you first install Blender and you open it up the very, very first time. That is, we get the quick setup splash screen. You will only see this uh, in, until you actually click through and select the options using the next button. So if you've already opened up Blender, uh, you will have to actually go into the preferences to change some of these settings if you've already clicked the next button. We're going to use all the default settings uh, that Blender developers uh, have decided are the best settings. And we're going to click Next. And this is the splash screen that you'll typically see. You'll notice that we have this little section right here where we can select templates. Templates are properties and layouts. So uh, it's not just a configuration of windows that we're going to see when we actually open up a template, but also pre-configured options like uh, settings of uh, color, color management settings and things like that are going to be different. And in particular, when we open up the video editing template, you will notice that if you go over to a, the properties window over here and we select the render properties tab and go to the bottom, the one major difference between the default settings for people who are doing 3D and for people who are doing video editing is the view transform. The view transform for video editing is set to standard, whereas it is set to filmic for people who are creating 3D uh, visuals and stuff like that. Now, there's not really a reason to use the filmic option for most people who are just doing video editing. And that is why the Blender developers have selected standard uh, view transform instead of the filmic option, which is a superior color option for people who are doing 3D. But here's the thing. I want to be able to come into the Blender program and get right to editing. I don't want to have to click on a template and, uh, and I don't want to do any extra steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert the general template which is the template, if you, you can see the templates if you go to File New, it's the template that opens up when we actually click the icon on our desktop to open up Blender. I want this to actually just automatically go to the video editing template or something that is the same setup as the video editing template. So let's just convert the default template to a video editing template. Now you'll notice across the top, of the default template that we have all of these tabs. Now these tabs are workspaces. Workspaces are pre-configured layouts. And I want this just to have the same things that the video editing template has. So I'm going to right click on the tabs that I don't want and I'm going to delete them. So we're gonna keep the rendering tab because that one is available to the, the typical uh, video editing uh, template. But I'm going to delete the rest of these. Let's just go through these. Uh, let's get rid of this. Okay. And then we're going to click the plus sign and we're going to select video editing. Okay, so now we have two tabs. If you right click on video editing, we can uh, reorder to front just because that's the way that it looks in the video editing template. And so we have these two workspaces, video editing and rendering. Let's go to the video editing uh, workspace tab. And what we're gonna do over here is we, this is the file browser and in the file browser, we drag our videos to the video sequencer section so that we can edit them. So I want you to select the uh, folder that you typically would have your video files in. It can be a parent directory or something. It's going to display this folder every time that we open by default. So select something you think is going to be the, the, the fastest way for you to get to your video. For me, I put my videos typically on the desktop. So I'm going to set that as the default. Over here we have the preview window, and over here we have the properties. All of the properties for Blender are in 
the in this editor type, which is called properties. And uh, down the side, we have tabs for different parts, uh, property settings for Blender. What we need to focus on uh, is the rendering or the render properties. And let's, let's start by clicking on that and going down to the bottom and going to color management. And look at that, because we were using the default template, it set the view transform to filmic, but we want this to be standard. Now, if you leave filmic on, you will notice that your render times will be double. But we do not need to use that, and that's why when uh, we use the, uh, the factory default video editing template, the developers have set the view transform to be standard as well. So we're just copying that here. Now let's go down to the tab below, and that is the output properties, and we're gonna set our default render settings. So most of the people who are watching uh, my series, I know this because I've actually uh, polled them, are doing 1080p video. But uh, you can set this to whatever you think that you're gonna be commonly uh, rendering at. Uh, it's, you can always change it, but you know, it just it saves time, you know, if you're always doing 1080p stuff. To set your uh, resolution settings to 1080p, you don't have to do it every single time. Now you'll notice when you go to the dimension section, we have this, these three dots followed by these three lines. Now, wherever you see these three dots followed by these three lines, that, that means that there are presets there. So we can click on that, and we can select from any of these presets. For me, I'm gonna use HGTV 1080p because that's almost everything I do is that. Uh, we're gonna click on it, and you'll notice that it stays up. We have to pull our mouse away, it disappears. And it will fill the resolution to be 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p and makes this 100%, uh, it's gonna view 100% in the preview. And we have the start frame and end frame. We always wanna start our video uh, on frame one. Uh, this is just the standard way to do it in Blender. And I always set the default end frame to 1000. Now, whatever is between the start frame and the end frame is what will be rendered when you go to the render menu and click render animation, which creates our video file. So next we can select a frame rate that we typically, typically like to use with our video. Uh, it should match whatever the, uh, the frame rate that you recorded at. Uh, it's important that we match frame rates because audio is synced with the frame rate. So this will be uh, auto set when you import video, but set it to whatever you typically use anyway. Uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of pre-configured uh, options that are common here. 24 is what I'm typically doing. Now let's go down to the output section, and output is going to be where the rendered file that you're going to render out will be saved to. By default, it saves it to temp, or it's, uh, it, on Windows it's ctemp. I'm actually on Ubuntu right now, Linux, so it saves to temp. But you can just make this your desktop if you like, or wherever. I'm gonna save mine to my desktop. So whenever I render out, whenever I go to render animation, it will save it to the desktop. You can leave uh, overwrite and file extension checkmarked. And we're gonna to go to file format, and we are going to select FFmpeg video. Now Blender uses a open source uh, transcoding program called FFmpeg to do all of the video and audio encoding. So we have to first select it so that we can get access to all of the encoding options for FFmpeg. Now, when I expand the encoding section, you'll notice that we again have one of these preset uh, icons, the three dots with the three lines. You can click on that and you can select one of these presets. I would recommend for most of the people that are watching this who are creating videos for platforms like YouTube or whatever, that the standard is H.264 in MPEG-4. Let's select that and move our mouse away. And that has selected a video codec of H.264. And let's change the output quality to be high quality or perceptually lossless. I mean, obviously, perceptually lossless is gonna make a bigger file than high quality, but let's, I'm gonna do high quality. And the encoding speed is how much time will the uh, encoder take to analyze the, uh, the video to compress it. The longer the time that it takes, 
the more optimal it can be in shrinking the file down to a smaller size. But I find that uh, we really want to balance between those two. I use good instead of using the slowest. Slowest would give you the smallest output file. But I've noticed that it's not, it's generally not that big of a difference. I'm gonna use good. The keyframe interval should be set to be half of whatever your frame rate is. This is according to YouTube's uh, recommendation. So my frame rate typically is 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna set my keyframe interval to be half that, which is 12. And YouTube also recommends that you use max B frames of two. So we're gonna set that to two. If you like, you can just leave it at zero, uh, play around with it, but this is just based off of YouTube's recommendation. And we wanna have audio with our video typically, so we're gonna use the AAC option and Pretty much the standard is going to be an MPEG-4 file with a video codec of H.264 and an audio codec of AAC. Uh, that's a pretty standard, uh, <laughs> a standard file for uh, media on the internet. And the bitrate you can set for the audio of 192. And that should be all that you need there. Let's scroll back up to the top. Everything looks nice here. Now let's go to our property settings. So to change some of the other things that uh, the look and the feel and, and things like that. So let's go to the edit menu and go down to preferences. And here we're gonna go through these tabs and change the things to just change the look and the feel and stuff like that. So I am going to be changing the resolution of the, the Blender program from one to 1.1. And you'll notice as I do hit enter, it's gonna kind of make everything blow up just a little bit. Um, you can obviously left click on it and drag and make it as big as you want. Um, but I find that 1.1 is what I prefer. I also use a line width that is thick. Now you'll notice when I, I'm gonna switch between thin and thick so you can see why. So when I make it thick, you'll notice that between these editor type windows, so each of these little drop downs will select an editor. Uh, this, for example, is the file browser editor. This right here would be the editor for video sequencer. And this would be an editor for properties. You'll notice that when I, when I uh, select thick and switch it between thick and thin, it spaces that area out um, much better when it's thick. And it makes it easier for me to do things like uh, copy the window. So for example, I, I went to this top corner of this editor type and I drop and I left click and pull down and it makes a copy. So you can actually create your own layouts this way. So it just makes it, I hit escape to actually undo that. Uh, it makes it easier for me to actually change my layout on the fly if I like. Um, I keep going to, uh, to edit and preferences to bring this back to the forefront. Uh, so we're gonna use resolution scale of 1.1. We're gonna use align width of thick. I no longer need to see the splash screen every single time I open up, so I'm gonna actually disable the splash screen from popping up. And we're gonna go down to the editors section here in, inside the interface uh, tab here. And we're gonna go to the temporary windows and this is something that changed from 2.7, and that is when we're rendering, do we want to display it in a new window, or do we want to just see a status bar showing the, the render happening? I've always felt that I don't want to waste like CPU time doing things that, are, that, that is not necessary. So I want to use the option for render in to keep user interface, which what it's going to do is when you go to and hit the render animation um, option to render out your final video, it's gonna just show you a status bar that will say it's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% uh, complete. Um, and we're not gonna waste any um, compute cycles uh, displaying stuff to the screen. So you can leave file browser in new window, but to make sure render in is set to keep user interface. Now, the next uh, tab on the left that we want to go to is going to be the system tab. Now, up, up at the top, we have the cycle render device. Uh, you don't really have to set this. You're probably gonna wanna have, a, have this you know, set up for 
if you're doing something in the 3D part of Blender. Um, for me, I have an NVIDIA uh, GPU, so I have the option to use CUDA. Um, these two other options are for different uh, process or you know GPU types. So you may have a an option for those. You can turn them on if you you want, but honestly, uh, this feature is not really going to be used for 99% of you who are doing video editing. Uh, so I just leave mine on uh, for uh, uh, to the to use my GPU if I'm doing 3D rendering. We're going to go down to the memory and limit section, and we're going to go to the sequencer cache limits. And what I do here is I have 16 gigs of RAM. So I'm going to give 80% of the RAM that I have to the cache. For one, uh, what it does is it will cache our, um, our, the video that is in our sequencer so that it can play back at a more constant frame rate. So I'm going to set mine to be 80% uh, of 16 gigs. So the way we do that, you can do you can set it exactly as I do, just by doing exactly how I do this, which is uh, 16,000 um, times, which is shift, the number eight gives you that asterisk, which is the times, and then 0 0.8. And what that is is saying 16 gigabytes times 0.8 means give me 80% of that, and that equals 12,800 uh, megabytes. So if it was 32, it'd be 32,000 times 0 0.8, give you 80%. You can play around with giving you know, 75% or 90%. I always try to reserve some of my RAM for the whole operating system to run. I, I don't want to give everything to Blender. Now, I'm sure that the operating system probably would prevent that from happening, um, but it's always good just to make sure that you're not over, you know, over promising <laughs> things to Blender. Um, so 12, uh, 12,800 is going to be reserved for the, key, uh, the sequencer cache. And I think that the other options uh, defaults are all fine. I'm going to go to this little icon down here, this three lines. And you'll notice that the check mark for auto save preferences is on. We'll leave that on. What it does is that if you open up this window, you don't have to actually click the save preferences button. We're going to do that anyway. But uh, you just have to change it and it automatically saves as soon as you change it. So that's all that we need for the preferences. Now, what I think we're going to do is we're going to go down to the sequencer down here, uh, and we're going to go down to playback, and we're going to select some of these options down here. Whoops. I'm going to switch no sync to AV sync to make sure that our audio and our video synchronize. We're going to turn on audio scrubbing. What that does is it will play back the audio when we drag over the, uh, the, the video in the sequencer. And I'm going to follow Playhead in different editors. So we're gonna, you can choose that one if you like. I, I've started using that one lately. So all we need to do now is go to File menu and go down to the Defaults option and click Save Startup File. And if you wanted to undo everything at any time, even after saving this, you can always select load factory defaults and it will bring, it will bring everything back to the way that it was when you first installed Blender. But we're going to click Save Startup File. As soon as you click that, it offers a dialog that says, OK, Save Startup File again. Click on it again. So now I am going to close this window and I'm going to show you what happens when you first open up Blender from this point on. It opens up to exactly uh, be set up it how we like it. It has all of our default uh, render settings configured. I can get right to clicking on one of my video files, dragging it into the sequencer, but we're going to talk about that in a coming video. So that's all I have for you today. I think you guys are going to enjoy using Blender. See you in the next video.